So with all the pre-training camp interviews that happened yesterday between Duke Tobin, uh, Coach Taylor, and owner Mike Brown, we got ourselves a tad bit of an update on Lyle Collins and Cheeto. Now we talked about a couple of days ago how all these players are going on the pup list starting off training camp and pretty much what that means is that at this moment in time before the start of the season they can be activated at any time but if they're not activated they are not going to be at training camp. They can do other processes as you know rehab from their injuries but they're not going to be a part of the training camp. It still counts against the 90 man roster but that's that. Now, not only are these two guys on the pup list, we also have Mr. Wilcox, and we, of course, do have Cochran, but those guys are not talked about as much because, obviously, these two are starters. So, we got a little bit of an update on what's going on. So, the Bengals might be without Law Collins and Cheeto, Mitchell Wilcox, and Dever Devin Cochran to start training camp. But it sounds like they're expecting at least... At expecting at least of the veterans to be cleared in the near future. Just one day after the team placed all four players on the pup list, Duke Tobin gave a positive update about Cheeto and Will Cox's status. I think two of them will probably be a little shorter term than the other two, Tobin said. I think we feel like Cochran has a little bit long, a longer term injury, and we're not sure when Lael will be cleared and ready to go. We think the other two will be up and going, hopefully. So, yes, based on what we kind of thought and projected, it looks like Cheeto will be ready to go sometime in August, which is actually a really big plus. It might be the first preseason game or the second preseason game. Obviously, he won't be playing either one. But he'll at least be cleared and ready to go for the season by that time. Meaning he'll have plenty of process and plenty of, you know, you know, training before the season starts. Um, the Bengals officially signed Wilcox on Monday to bolster their tight end room. He underwent uh, off-season surgery, but is expected to be back in the near future. Uh, Cheeto moved around well during the off-season program and is close to returning to the field after undergoing knee reconstruction surgery in November. Collins' status is a bit more complicated. He tore his ACL on Christmas Eve and underwent, underwent surgery in January. He's, a, he's made good progress, but may not return to the start of the season. I don't think we're going to looking... I don't think we're looking to rush any decisions there, Tobin said when asked about Collins' future. We'll see how it plays out as we go, but it's hard to predict right now. And he's not wrong. It's almost impossible to predict. And yes, while some experts are saying he's going to start off on the pup list to start the season off, that means he'll be out the first six weeks of the season. Obviously, he gave an update two months ago saying that he feels 100% he could even play that day with a brace around his knee. No one really knows, right? It all comes down to how Collins is feeling. And yes, it's possible he does start week one based on, again, if he feels like he's 100%. My hope and my, you know, overall theory is I'm hoping that he doesn't rush himself back to try to save his job and end up hurting himself even more. That's what I really hope doesn't happen. If he has saw in the pup list, you know what? It's a part of football. He'll saw in the pup list and we'll kind of take a seat back and, you know, wait for everything to go through, right? That's just, it is what it is. Uh, but with that being said, we at least have, you know, Jonah Williams to take over for that or Jackson Carmen. So that's not really that bad. So very awesome to see, though, that Cheeto is kind of, you know, getting to that point where he's not ready to come back, but he's going to be ready to come back sometime very soon. Getting Cheeto back in the mix would be huge for a secondary that will have two starting, new starting safeties. 1,000%. And we literally heard this, surprisingly enough here, from the one of the rookies, Jordan Battle. Because Nick Scott hasn't been able to do mandatory mini, um, mandatory minicamp and OTAs because of his injuries, 
Jordan Battle has gotten more playtime, more practice time. And he came out and said, you know, it's almost a gift because now he's able to, you know, get the timings down. And yes, while, as he said, you can, you know, look at everything on paper and see how everything works, it really comes down to getting that communication down with your teammates, perfecting that communication. And that stuff you do not get other than in process and on the field. If you're not on the field worrying about like, okay, this play was called, how are we going to communicate with one another? How do we trust one another? How do we think this guy's going to react? How this guy's going to react? That's all it is. Because you see so many times, especially with newer players, where you see a cornerback, right? Play dr starts, the cornerback drops, and he thinks in his head, I got a safety over top. So I'm going to let this receiver go here because I got a safety over top. There's no safety over top. That was miscommunication. He thought he had it. He the play might have designed to have it, but the play what what ended up happening was that safety thought, oh, the cornerback has him. I'm gonna go across the middle here. I'm gonna look at the lane because it's a slant route. That guy gets a free touchdown every single time. And then you look at that play and you're like, oh, that's a blown coverage. Why did that happen? Miscommunication. Someone wasn't communicating correctly. And again, the only way you get that, you know, to work and not happen, more play time, more, you know, together, working together, and have everyone on the same page. So, yes, having Cheeto back in that offense, especially a veteran like Cheeto is, to really work with Jordan Battle, work with DJ Turner, work with Nick Scott, and kind of get that, you know, whole philosophy going is so, so, so important. You got to keep in mind, Dax Hill, you know, obviously, yes, he played last year and he was a first round pick. He didn't play that much, though. You know, so this is his first full offseason where he's the starter now. And he's going to have to get those timing downs. He's going to have to learn everything that Von Bell and Jesse Bates knew and knew and worked with Lou's defense. And I truly believe he will. It just, it takes time, right? It's nothing that you can just pick up over a week or two. You got to take months. And it's going to probably take, honestly, half the season for them to truly get down the philosophy. And, you know, some players, they might take years before they're truly in sync with one another. So, again, like I said, all these things being considered, having Cheeto back as soon as possible is absolutely awesome. And, again, for Collins, we'll have to see what ends up happening there. They picked up Mitchell Wilcox, which I, I just want to talk about this to end this video off. Not that bad of a signing. I mean, obviously, he's on the pup list now. He's hurt, but it makes sense. This tight end room is really all basing around Irv Smith. And I feel like if Irv Smith goes down with injury, they're just going to use Charlie Jones more. And I think that's really what this comes down to is Charlie Jones is going to become the new tight end if Irv Smith goes down with injury. Hopefully, he doesn't, obviously. Tell me down below your thoughts and opinions. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.